hello everyone. Uh, excited to actually be the moderator for our next session. Um, we will actually now talk about the end-to-end -end potential impact um, of procurement. And let me first start with introducing our panelists. Let me start with welcoming Francois Mocan. Hello, Hello, Francois. Francois is a, is a seasoned uh, procurement leader, has been working a lot in automotive, railway, now in pharma, and we're very excited to have you here on stage. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Teanu Liakopulo, welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Teanu. Teanu is a colleague and partner at McKinsey, and she leads globally our analytics in procurement. So very excited to have you on the panel today. Thank you. And then, of course, last but not least, Charles Letizia. Welcome, Charles. Hi, John. Charles is the, is the CPO of Tesco, has been the CPO of, uh, in various areas before Gen Gen Generali, so very excited to have you all with your experience. Good. Um, we will also do this not only here interactive, but also interactive with you, so if you want to share any questions um, during the discussion, we're welcome to come back to, that and to them at the end. Thinking about end-to-end -end for maximum impact today, we thought actually com combines four different themes. So we will talk about the new role in procurement. We will talk about what does it mean for data connectivity and, and the implications that is required to maximum impact. And then, which is actually a really new topic, is the scenario-based proactive uh, planning. And then last but not least, of course, what does it mean for the, uh, for the implication of the operating model? Good. Uh, let me start with the first subject and maybe uh, switch over here to um, Francois. The, the topic of how do we actually need to think about differently in terms of impact that, that procurement can generate, net savings, we discussed that earlier, and then the broader set of drivers. What is your perspective on, on what matters most there? Surely for, for a while we were expected to deliver savings and to drive the cost. The feeling I have today is that we have two big game changers. And one first one is well known and uh, we discuss it a lot uh, related to the crisis. And now we are in the energy crisis, but we've been facing the COVID and then the Ukraine. So we feel that definitely we need new mindset, new profile, and this is deeply linked to agility and ability to uh, think differently in front of uh, difficult world or vulnerability we may have inside or at the suppliers. And the second topic I see by far more positive is that we feel that um, there is a permit to operate now linked to ESG compliance and somewhere also related to the company uh, purpose. So if you want to attract talents, if you want to get orders from customers, uh, whenever you want to discuss with investors, banks, shareholders, board, everywhere you need to have in mind environment, social responsibilities. Yes. So for me, those are the, the key drivers right now. And Charles, maybe from your perspective, given that you worked previously in financial institutions, now in retail, how do you see the trend there of the different dimensions which matter? Yeah, I, I agree with Francois. I think there, there are a few elements that are taking a bit of an enhanced role in terms of what we do in procurement. Sustainability, I think for the, for the first time, we're starting to see it as a quantify, quantifiable element of value that perhaps before was a bit generic. I think now we're starting to think how do we track this? What is the real value? What is our role in procurement to actually deliver that? And it's central. So, uh, for example, in Tesco, in our um, strategy, we have strong focus on value delivery that has the typical elements of cost, cash, and so on. But now, sustainability is central to that. So I think that's a big change. And obviously, considering the environment, and I'm sure we'll talk about that more in detail later, risk and how we manage risk in this kind of volatile times we live in is quite critical. How do we go from proactive, to, from reactive to proactive? How do we react faster and quicker to the different challenges is, 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 um, is one of the, the, the key topics for us in Tesco. Yeah. And, and Tiano, given your experience with many 
global institutions, also in pharma, for example. How do you see the trend uh, in that part of the portfolio? Yeah, and I think very much what we heard, it's um, a unique point in time when so many important um, exco level agenda topics are related to procurement, which is what you're, you're saying. And uh, it's a unique point in time where procurement has the opportunity to actually play an active role. And that's a little bit of a choice because you can also participate, just participate instead of leading. But from um, volatility, managing volatility, managing risk, protecting revenue, protecting margin, enabling the sustainability agenda, driving diversity, it's a rich uh, set of topics. Cross-functional, but I would also say a cross-value chain. Uh, which, by the way, uh, need technology also given their complexity to be managed well. So I think procurement um, uh, has a, a unique opportunity to step up. I think for years we've been talking about how the function gets a seat at the table. I think this is, this is the time, right? And um, uh, several CPOs are actually grabbing that uh, opportunity, so uh, quite inspiring. Yeah, so this is a little bit, uh, I think, where we started the discussion uh, on, the, on the overall trend for the, for the KPIs. Now, of course, the underlying question is very much what does it actually mean for the data and the analytics and the requirements? And maybe, Francois, starting with you, how, how do you see the, 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 the situation there? Is it is something that you are already quite feeling okay with the data required for end-to-end? -end? Where, where do you see you or similar, similar companies in the journey? In the journey, we, we started very late first, to tell, it, uh, to tell it true, and we used to struggle with many RPs, difficulty to get data, and uh, I was seeing just before, data first, yeah, data first, but it's not the only aim of this. So uh, definitely, we, we went through that process of finding the right tool, the right methods to consolidate data. And when we went to that point, we discovered that there was a huge opportunity uh, with data insights. As far as data analytics has been helping us, not only uh, looking to cost, to cash, uh, but also at the time of the crisis, being able to evaluate alternative suppliers, geographical impacts. So for us, it's, data is the, the start of the journey, and uh, we are working on the next steps. Very interesting. And I know, Charles, you, I think you, you in particular with, with, with Tesco, I've, I've always heard a lot about what are, so to say, the, the data uh, uh, attempts that you actually do to, to find out what are the end-to-end -end, uh, challenges. If you, if you just reflect on, on, on the journey, where, where do you see the, the biggest connectivity improvements that are happening or needs that need to happen going forward? I think that the, the way, at least in my experience, is I, I, I think we went to a place of, of perhaps poor data to a situation that we have quite a lot of data today. Um, so, for example, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to other CPOs where maybe five, ten years ago, you know, it took us two weeks to get to a place where we could make decisions around spend just, just to get a comprehensive view. Probably that's not the case anymore. It's that deeper layer of insights, which I think it's still we have, we have a way to go to get where we need to get to make better de decisions around spend and cost, number one, but also around, for example, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys can relate to that in terms of we're doing quite a lot on, on risk management today. You know, we have all these different platforms. Everyone's quite diligent in terms of signing off new vendors and so on, kind of understanding the market. It's a bit um, um, something that you mentioned, Francois. It's a bit backwards looking rather than forward looking. How do we really kind of put things together to give you that advanced visibility? Our ability, we're never going to have the, the crystal ball, but give us the, the ability to make decisions and with, with quicker access to insights, which now takes quite a bit of time. And I'm not sure in the times we live in that that's enough in terms of how quickly we can react. So I think that's, that's a big challenge for us. And, and how do you see the challenges in particular on the system or the availability of tools or, 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 or things to, to help you on that? Is this something where you say we need more, so to say, flexible systems? Is, is the standard that you, that you can actually see uh, working fine or, or how much, so to say, further innovation is needed? Yeah, I, th I think the challenge is that we still have too many data silos, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm not seeing, and I'm keen to, to see in the conference with all the 
technology companies that are here is uh, what are we doing to kind of aggregate this in a, in a simple, comprehensive way that doesn't mean that all of a sudden we need to invest 10 million to put all this data mm -hmm. together because we're not going to do that. It's just, you know, how, how do we bring this thing together in a, uh, in a logical way that is easy, uh, quick, and actually allows us to get that sort of insights from data. The data is there. I think it's that layer of, of integration that is still not quite at the level of maturity that it should be. Is that a fair? Yeah, very it makes a lot of sense. At least from my. <laughs> no, and I think yeah. da data connectivity is, yeah. I think, the new, uh, the new topic. Because as you yeah. say, now data is available. Maybe it's not of perfect quality, so there's something about that. But also connecting um, uh, data. And it's connecting data internally, but m most companies are also kind of, let's say, um, solving that. Then it's um, connecting with external data. I think risk is a great example where I have a client who actually invested in, in this kind of risk, uh, creating their own risk radar. But they, they have all sorts of different data, weather data, geopolitical risk data, supplier, individual supplier information to to give them the highlights of what the problems are. And it's interesting now we see increasingly connectivity selectively with suppliers. I think that's probably also the next frontier. And we saw it also in the semiconductor crisis. Some companies that manage this very well, they did have, the, have an interface with the suppliers to, to do planning end to end together. So I think we're way past the spend cube uh, era. And uh, the question that comes up is, you know, how expensive and how difficult it is to to get what we're discussing here. And um, it, it, it is, of course, an effort, but it's not a multi-year, multi-million ERP implementation effort that we're talking about, right? And uh, when the business cases are robust, uh, we find actually that the return investment is very attractive. I don't know if you see it differently yeah, from uh, uh, No, no, I won't say it's, it's it's expensive anyway, you know, anything you pay is too expensive. <laughs> uh, but with regard to that, um, it's very efficient and it gives you far more than uh, opportunities on cost. At the time we were suffering from lack of availability of material, that's key. Having the right insight at the right moment to the right people, that's what is changing uh, big difficulties to opportunities. Yeah. And to the point, I fully agree, to the point of, you know, the next impact frontier for procurement, I think it's a quite interesting uh, you know, ability to combine data from across the value chain to provide insights that allow you, for instance, to own the margin manager uh, role. We, we've been discussing a lot with the teams of Orpheus uh, on several new developments, and I was at the time to say we need a data lake to get risk, to get global economic indexes, and so on and so on. And, so a data lake and a data ocean and pipeline and so on. And at <laughs> the end, it looks terrible. The other way around, when you find a single place where you have the truth, where everyone is getting the same, uh, the same hypothesis, the same uh, link at the same time, uh, and in the front top, we find a way to, mm. to identify moving small signals, small signs, uh, that are driving to alerts or opportunities, that's the perfect uh, match. Yeah. And we and worked with you yeah. on some aspects of defining the North Star for Gerbe. And that North Star, I see it now. We, we also have, have received one question here from the group. By the way, uh, you're welcome to introduce more questions. And, and the question in the room was, how do you see the role of data in identifying the skills required? The skills requi required to make the end-to-end -end impact? Yeah, so, I, so what's your view on this one? I, I think this is, this is a very good question because what we've seen recently, more than ever, is we become the focal point, you know, every so often I get the question from any, someone in the organization, Charles, what's going on with, um, you know, a particular category, this market or this region, can we source from here and so on. That understanding of the macro picture I think it's a skill that increasingly we will look to have within procurement because, you know, when things are great, markets are functioning, you know, it's not kind of a priority, who cares? Um, it's still important, maybe who, who cares is not the right, the, the right word, but in this type of environment, it, it becomes critical. And I think people are turning around to procurement 
I mean, it's a natural place for people to get answers on what's happening out there. Are we, do we have the skills? I think it's a very good, good question. We are developing that. But it's becoming increasingly a very important piece of what we need to, to deliver for procurement. And maybe it's a matter of skills, it's also a matter of building the capabilities within the team. So I think it's balanced, the two, yeah. the two opportunities are there. When you bring more information, when you bring insights, you also develop skills to the people. Yeah. I think it's also a ne nice segue to our next uh, uh, topic in that context, which is obviously once you have the data, the question is, how do you actually best use it, in particular in the context of proactively looking forward, what are, so to say, the scenarios and potentially mitigating actions that actually need to be introduced. So, um, maybe starting with you, what's your view on this? Uh, how do you actually see the biggest, uh, biggest challenges there? Yeah, maybe a um, couple of different angles to that. Uh, first of all, um, I think we see a lot of companies moving now to different types of analytics and insights they're looking for. For instance, there is a lot around predictive analytics, uh, smarter than uh, I think in the past uh, where there was a kind of a, a plain, not so sophisticated forecast. So that's one. Uh, there's a lot more um, dynamic modeling to understand more um, uh, real time what's going on in the markets and a lot on scenario analysis as well. So I think there is a, um, in order to provide this kind of forward looking perspective to help um, the corporation lead the sustainability agenda or uh, manage uh, margins better and so on, there is a lot of that going on. And I think back to the skills question, there is a different profile of procurement professionals that is emerging as successful out of that the ones who are more curious, right, with strong problem-solving skills, strong thought leaders who can actually combine all of that and translate it into a, let's say, actionable uh, a recommendation or an insight they can take to their business partners to, to drive some of this change going forward. So I think these are maybe a couple of trends, right? So getting much more forward-looking with the analysis, but also having this ability um, in the team to, um, to, to turn the uh, information into insights. Yeah. Uh, first of all, let me, let me ask you a very, very, very uh, specific question in this context. I, I recently had a discussion with the, with the CEO of one of my clients, the CEO, and I told him about the need for, to better predict and invest into tools and transparency and so on. And he said, sorry, my friend, this is all BS, right? Why do you invest in all of this? At the end of the day, the price is the price. Ask the supplier what price you can get and that's the choice you have, right? How do you think about this? How much is it worth to really investing into this? If he's, he's well prepared to suffer <laughs> <laughs> first. And I would say, um, I, I will come back to your point of uh, scenario-based uh, approach. Um, for a while I had that feeling, you know, those people making ideal world in their strategy. And I was always having the feeling the, the forecast was telling me more about the forecaster than about the future. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of it, now with everything moving, we always balance in between tactical and strategic decisions. And being able to build scenario and plan B, plan C, worst, base case, uh, is somewhere being ahead of a little bit of time that could be crucial yes. when, it, when it moves. So I would say to that CEO, um, anyway, it was trying. And, and, and Charles, from your view, view, view on, on forward-looking, anticipating scenarios, is this something that uh, is indeed something you, you feel we are, we are getting to, to get the right benefits out of it? Or is it more nice to have things that at the end of the day it's unrealistic to really predict. Yeah, it is something we're looking at. I mean, clearly, there's two elements, right? Retail, just the nature of retail is very, I don't want to say short term, but obviously very immediate, right? So the planning tends to be very quick. Those cycles are, are, are very small, which it's, it's an opportunity because I think, uh, you know, if you have a procurement organization that is able to react quickly, um, it's always good, but at, at the same time, it's a bit of a challenge because you, you do tend to perhaps procrastinate a little bit on the long-term planning 
and, and modeling of things. We, we do it but very selectively for very specific categories. Um, I do see perhaps once, once we go through, through this cycle, through this current market and this economy that is actually pushing us to kind of be a little bit more guarded in defense and, uh, and maybe just a little bit more reactive that we will kind of kick that off again. But right now there, there's, there's a little bit of a more short to mid-term focus that requires a bit kind of a different approach to it. If I may uh, build on this also on what you, you both said, um, I, I think there is something also about what's the role procurement wants to play. And of course, we've had this discussion, I think many times in the past around, do you influence price and what's happening with the other levers? And it's important to have this foresight because you can then say, these are the five things we can do to offset or change, even if there are levers you as procurement functions do not influence or control directly. And I think that's another element of how the role of the function is changing. Because right now you have the visibility, you have the scenarios, and you actually bring that to the table much more proactively, even if it's uh, I don't know, around design to value or portfolio optimization or something else that uh, someone else controls. The, the fourth topic in that context that we wanted to cover a little bit is actually what does it mean for the operating model? of course, in terms of the skill set, but also in terms of the, the structural setup. So, so uh, Charles, how do you see the implications for the way organizations need to organize procurement on this data end-to-end -end prediction challenge? Is there something you, you think should be done within procurement? Yeah, I think, look, I mean, we, we've been thinking about this for quite some time, but I think it's becoming more real and more immediate that we need to kind of seriously start considering what our procurement needs to look like five, ten years from now. Um, in my view, I think a lot of the things that we're doing today, probably we will do very differently, and we're starting to do very differently. You know, the, the tactical buying aspect of things, and even the tactical element of what we consider strategic today might not be that strategic tomorrow, because I think to, to an extent, we are going to continue to see a level of automation, AI impact, et cetera, that's going to increase. So I do see a very different traditional buying, buying role. I think it's, it's around managing suppliers, but, ma but kind of knowing the market and managing that network, that mesh of, of partners that you have well, I think that is going to become ever more central and critical to what we do in procurement. So I see us migrating to that. As we mentioned before, a number of different skills around uh, knowing how to manage data, to get insights out of data, uh, is, is going to increasingly become uh, more and more important for, for a procurement professional. So I see big change coming. We need to be ready for it. I think, I think it's the function for five years from now maybe we're all gonna be here again, and let's see if that's the case. It's, it's going, we're gonna see some significant changes in the function going forward. And for small, in, in, your, in your pharma context, is this, uh, it's probably for you even more important, right, to, to predict a little bit what the changes are. Yeah, our lead time to move or to change anything are quite significant, uh, for good reasons, by the way. But um, when I look to the digital transformation and the AI and so on, that's, that was buzzwords for me for a while. Uh, today I see that um, make it, making it happen, happening is, is something that, that is very meaningful for the team because that has been bringing more mid-term vision to the, to the team, more understanding of the market, and uh, we are deeply trying to merge general um, economics data, indexes, supplier risk, environmental aspects, we feel that we will have to compute so much information, so, so many things and sources uh, in the coming years to answer to the scope three, to answer to anything like that, that uh, without making this actionable uh, digital transformation plan, or what's the name of it, uh, it won't be possible. And looking to that, I was mentioning the North Star. We have been trying to draw the ideal world where we want to go. And what was 
for me a, a difficult understanding. It was something you know far away. Uh, seems now really accessible. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm feeling pretty confident on that, and uh, I think that coming back to the role of uh, of procurement, we are going to be at the corner of data, information, decision, strategy, um, every single day in the coming years. And decisions we are taking now are impacting largely. I remember those people, and you were mentioning in your presentation earlier today, uh, the currencies, uh, those people that were focusing on going to uh, best uh, cost countries, low cost countries, and so on. Uh, today, uh, if your only target is that, then uh, you are in big difficulties. We, we received another question from the room, so interesting to discuss this, and this is a little bit on the how. So how does a manager drive the procurement agenda beyond commercials in this context? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Teano, whether you have any, any perspective on, on the it's how. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I'll try. No, I think there is a starting point with everything. So the, the business partners, let's say they control demand, they may be controlling specifications in most cases. So the starting point is to bring interesting information to them. Did you know you have, uh, I don't know, a temp labor that is with you for more than a year, right? And bring that type of data. Or did you know that your spec range is so small when others actually have bigger spec ranges? And what's the value of that? So I think um, I, I, uh, I may be uh, saying something most people have actually been trying, but having the power of information, turning it into insight and being helpful to the people who actually control the other levers is, a, is an important starting point. And you're really kind of uh, uh, supporting decision making, let's say in a different way. So I think that would be my uh, one, uh, one suggestion. And then there are agenda items uh, these days such as sustainability where most of the procurement leaders will probably, I would say, um, be responsible for even 80, 90% of scope three emissions, let's say, in their value chains. Why wouldn't procurement own the sustainability agenda and bring forward a strategy and a plan on, some, on a topic like this? And maybe a little bit of an, <clears throat> uh, reflecting on this a little bit from you as CPOs, right? If you think about your personal agenda, how much time do you actually need to spend these days on topics like, predictive, forward-looking analytics and the data implications. How, how important is this in your day-to-day -day leadership role on, uh, in the function? We should be allocating more time. If I give you a, an honest answer, I think what's happening is we know, looking at the market and how important it is for us to kind of react in terms of uh, perhaps some of the harder elements of value delivery, considering <laughs> where we are today, so look, yes, uh, we are allocating more time than before, for sure. I think we have to, to, to well, kind of more. focus more. Yeah. And I would, and I would also say more time than before, but we need to react also on some aspects. But I have the feeling I'm doing my uh, strategic plan again each month. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> maybe a very good closing words. Thank you very much for participating. Thanks for the good discussion. And uh, I hope this had some, we had some interesting food for thought for you to continue uh, in the discussion outside in the room. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. a lot.